Let's say like this. The first thing that you really need to remember is that you do need a company to operate your startup effectively because on the other hand, in case you're trying to build up your project without having any kind of legal entity, it will put a huge risk on yourself because in that case, the amount of liabilities that might be put on you, on your project and your, let's say, team might be unlimited. And in terms of as well, like contractual liability, about taxation liability and about like especially governmental issues like licensing, for example, in case you have to obtain a license as per your scope of business. So it's amazing. Like you really do have to incorporate a company. <laughs> The key considerations to choose an appropriate country, to choose an appropriate jurisdiction for this is the first thing, you know, just to consider what your project is about and what is your target audience. Because in some cases, the choice of a country where you are going to be incorporated might lead to let's say, additional licensing requirements, or at the same time, you might have an ability to choose a country where there's there like no regulation or the regulation is more relaxed, let's say. So the first thing is to understand your scope of business and your target audience in terms of countries. The next thing is to understand what are the tax consequences, because you might probably hear about the thing like call like tax heaven and these countries exist. So in some cases, structuring your project using that tax heavens or the special IP box regimes might lead to like very much reduced tax burden. So the second point is to think about tax consequences. And the third point is about to think what is the, let's say, legal climate in the country? Because some countries are really keen to attract investments, to attract projects and startups. And other countries, on the contrary, they are not that much focused, especially on Web3. So, you know, looking overall in like for like more than 180 countries, you might find the right spots with the appropriate tax burden, like say affordable with the relaxed legislation and with the ability of the country to accept and attract more and more startups. There is, let's say, the standard line that you have to follow when you're trying and wishing to register a company. The very first step is to find an appropriate country for sure. Once you find the appropriate country, you should go to the local tax council or in some cases you can go strictly like directly to the company's house. Some countries are that much willing to help any kind of business to get relocated or registered in this country that they just literally are ready to communicate with the, with the startups directly. So the second step is to find the person or the, let's say, governmental agency that will help you to do this. The third step is to gather up all the papers that you might need. For sure, you might need a passport of the director, let's say the passport of the stakeholders, the shareholders, and let's say the basic KYC for each person who is making the key decision. And the, let's say the third step is to understand how your company will be governed because on the early stages, it, it might not be seem to be you know so important but believe me on the next stages especially once your project is grown up project is a uh, very important to understand how the company is going to be governed how the tokens should be distributed how the dividends should be should, should be distributed as well so let's say these four steps are the main steps when you're considering to uh, set up a company 